What's going on, everybody? And welcome to another episode of Disruptors in the Culture. I am Joshua Meekins, one of your co-hosts, and I'm sitting here with the fantastic, amazing, and stunning co-host, Amira Smith. Um, What's up, guys? All right, so we're back with another episode. Our guest, we have a very special guest today. Um, We're going to go on his creative journey because, you know, being a chef is a very highly creative thing. Now, people, you might say, I cook every day, but you don't cook like him. Right. No, you talk don't. Heavy, talk Preach. about it. So today talk we got it. our guy, Chef Beans, right here. Chef Beans coming through with the mental cuisine. What's going on, y'all? With the mental cuisine. Okay, okay. <laughs> and this is this is, this is is a little link up that we've been trying to do, you know, for a little bit. I know seeing Chef Beans doing his thing out in L.A., he's been uh, kind of been a maestro, a, a chef, as you will, as, we, as we're going to keep going with that. Um, cooking things up, you know, doing plays, writing books, inspiring the youth in a bunch of different ways, doing runs, yes, hosting runs, that's marathons, it. 26.2 miles, but who's counting, right? Nope. I mean, who's, who's counting? I'm, I'm counting if I'm running that far. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. I'm counting every single mile and every calorie burned. But, you know, it's, it, 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 it gets, it takes a while for somebody to get to that point, right? Yes, yeah. absolutely. And, you know, here on Disruptors in the Culture, we unpack journeys. We talk about blueprints. You know, we really want to get to know the people behind the, uh, the mastermind of their craft. So, you know, we, we start here with a with a simple question, but, you know, it can have a, a as intensive an answer as it needs to. Who are you and what defines what you do or how do you define what you do? Yeah. I define what I do as an innovator. Mm. I'm innovative because I find different ways to redefine my new normal. And when I say my new normal growing up, there's been a lot of people who always tried to make me operate in boxes. This is how you're supposed to live your life. You go to college, you get a job, create a family. That was the quintessential happily ever after. Mm. But as you go through different steps, especially as an artist, there isn't really a roadmap besides just you got to figure it out and fail yourself forward. So after I graduated from college, media production major, I got into education because that was the easiest job that I can get that I was effective at, but not necessarily happy at. So when I did a reflection after my apartment caught on fire in 2017, I realized that the things that give me inexplainable joy is when I'm being a creative, Mm -hmm. is when I'm storytelling. And I just kept building off of that momentum. So again, when people ask me what I do or what it is I do, I'm an innovator. I'm a chef. You can call me an inventor, a mad scientist, Mm. but I create a reality based off of the things that I create in my mind. So if you went to school for media, like you did like full scale production. Oh, yes. So what like what were you teaching? Were you teaching media production? No, just straight through K through 12, because Mm. when it comes to media, different subjects or uh, primarily uh, primarily like language arts and things like Mm. that. But when it comes to, like, being a media production major, a lot of times you're supposed to get interns, mm. especially where my school is at, William Patterson in North Jersey, go to New York, get internships, things like that. But I realized I, at the time I didn't take it as serious as the real media production major, so I didn't get any interns, becoming a bros, I'm traveling to different yards, just literally having fun. Yeah. A lot of things in education, like the rigor, never really challenged me, and I always got by just by being average, even though I've always been an above-average nigga. I'm, I've never really pushed myself to my full potential, if that's even a thing. So when I got to a space where I just kept getting things off of my levels of manipulation, not manipulation like mm. taking advantage of my integrity, manipulation like a candle. Like when you light something and you could change the aroma of a room. I always oh, yeah. knew that I had that gift of gap. Mm. I was like, yo, you're just doing things just because you're good at them. What actually makes sense to you? Mm. Yeah. And that's when I really got back into... You've always liked cameras. Go go back on that path. Don't yeah. just do things because it's paying bills. Gotcha. That's you when had, I you really had that, that finesse with that finesse and get you them internships. Exactly. You said, damn. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it was it, it wasn't even a, a priority to me because I was still progressing academically, but as far as what could have really set me up for success, I was just having fun. Yeah. Like yeah. having fun as an undergrad. And then I feel like there's a lot of people who have occupations that they don't necessarily like. They mm-hmm. just do because it's probably making their parents happy or because it's paying the bills. Mm-hmm. So once I found myself, my foresight told me I would be in that same situation if I didn't reroute mm-hmm. and really lean into 
who what really sprouted this Chef Beans character, which I'm sure we're going to get into. I, I mean, you're transitioning right into it because even you talking about the manipulation with the candle, like that's that's beautiful. It's one of those things where it's like, okay, you know what your surroundings are, but now I need to you know hone this and and, and, and craft this in order to kind of develop my passion and, or find out what that passion is. So I mean, I think that really kind of how walks. long? Well, my question: How long were you teaching before you said I, I can't do this no more? I graduated in 2014. <laughs> I got into education that um, that was May when I graduated. I got into education that August and did that up until because I went from K through 12 to even like higher education mm. up at Stevens Institute in Hoboken, New Jersey. Okay. All of that fly crib, New York City skyline. All, but it, it just was like you're just doing this because you can do it. Yeah. So from 2014 to 2018 to where I was just like. No, yeah. no to all of this. I don't want to be those guys who just doing things because it pays the bills or because it makes sense. I need to really do what makes sense to me. Yeah. Because the era that we're in, we're in the entertain. I mean, the internet era where we're seeing little kids make million dollars off of opening toys. Yep. Yeah. Where we're, we can go on YouTube and see people making it from shredding things in a blender. Mm -hmm. It's like, bro, you've always had a unique way of thinking. How can you monetize your creativity? And um, I don't know if I'm going ahead. But right, just I, keep going. So Chef Beans came about, you know, being the bros, we make soft fry return. We're gonna wear, you know how we get it up. <laughs> you know, we wear whatever when it comes to cookouts and things like that. Absolutely. And there was a random bro vendor who only had chef hats left. Mm. Mm. And I had no nil. I'm like, let me get that chef hat. My nickname was always Q Beans growing up, Quan Bevins. My boys just started calling me Q Beans. I got the chef hat, people started calling me Chef Beans because I cut the rug up. Y'all know the vibe. <laughs> it's the hops. Right. Yeah. It's the hops. So as Chef Beans kept creating and my crib caught on fire. Every, so wait, so wait, fo give me, give us, give us the chef, and then we are gonna get into the crib. All right, so, so. The, they're very, they're like synonymous because mm -hmm. I got the chef hat in 2016, yep. and as people kept calling me Chef Beans, I then got an apron that had Chef Beans on it. I really started building mm -hmm. this character, and on Snapchat, I created him into like a superhero. Okay. Like let's say I needed a bottle opened or something, or I got a flat tire. Who's going to save me? You would hear the superhero music, then Chef Beans would appear. Mm. So I would do that randomly on Snapchat. People loved it. 2016 comes, my apartment catches on fire, and I lost everything but my creativity. Wow. So when I was extremely reflective, like, what really brings you joy? I'm like, every time you're on Snapchat doing these little Chef Beans things, that really makes you happy. What would that look like as a business? Like, if you really mm. did that full time. And I was like, okay, you're not a traditional chef. You don't cook like that. But your creativity is a reflection of the things that you cook up. So let that be the largest umbrella. Okay, you got Chef Beans. You need like a logo. What about intentional consumption? Because intentional oh. consumption can be what you physically consume. But what about the things people are watching on the Internet? What about the books they read? That's also a level of ingestion. And I just kept building off of the momentum with that to where... Now, everything, every content element that people see me create is a level of intentional consumption because people don't know if they watch police brutality, how they feel after watching that video. Yep. If they watch a fight or something, they don't know how, what that's doing to their spirit. But my, if you create content that is similar to how you're trying to feed a baby, you can't always feed a baby like that. You got to create the rocket ship or the train to create some type of element to where it's exciting. Mm. Do that with your content. And that's where Chef Bean was birthed. Chef Beans was birthed at. It was like create content like that. Like after people consume it, it's the content they didn't even know they needed. Wow. That's 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 powerful. That's powerful. Even with that, like so so even with the and we talked about this a little bit before too, like what was the first levels of intentional consumption that you created? Like, I know there was the, the videos that you had as Chef Beans, but I know there was like a vlog a little bit that took place as well. So that was like you were doing it. Kind of like in your spare time while teaching. Yes. At first. Like, and then when the crib burnt down, you said, I'm leaving all this behind. Mm. It, 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 it took me like a year to get to that point. Mm. But yes, I had to kind of develop into that. So Crib Caught on Fire 2017, I'm still trying to figure it out, exiting a relationship. And I think that's like romantically, that's another anchor that holds a lot of people back. Because mm. some people hold on to like relationship because of the familiarity as opposed to what's actually giving them fuel. Mm. So after everything kind of like spiraled or did whatever i'm like okay what do you have you have yourself you have your creativity and you know how to tell stories so i don't know if y'all remember the behind the music videos that used to be on vh1 back oh, in the day yeah. when they would tell you like this is how jamie fox actually really started i've always known that i was extraordinary yeah. so i'm like no one else knows that right now so let me start recording so when everything does pop off i have content to give them yeah it was completely straight 
confidence. Like, I'm going to start recording now because when the world catches up to me, I'll have things to give them. Like, this is where I was when I had 20 cents in my pocket. Yeah. This is where I was when I didn't know the direction I wanted to go. And that was the direction with that. But as far as really intentional consumption, I started doing course of the days. I invested in a restaurant mm. booth. And the course of the days was sliding in. What's going on, y'all? So have you ever thought about the difference between certain ATMs? Some ATMs you can just take cash out. Other ATMs you can actually make deposits and things with within that. What am I talking about? Some of y'all are in friendships or relationships where people are just withdrawing without actually making deposits. That's why you're so defeated. Mm. Yeah. That's why you're so depleted because there's no reciprocity. Blah, blah, blah. And it will end with continue to be great, continue to be mindful, but most importantly, be intentional. So I started to do those like weekdays and that was like my level of the Chef Beans channel intentional consumption. Mm. Mm. Started building off of that and that's when I transitioned to like you've always wanted to write a book, write a book. You always wanted to do, which I'm... But that's where my mindset was like start somewhere, but keep the culinary aesthetic. But if you don't have no food, th traditional food, that's fine. Yeah. But your content will be the things that people are supposed to be consuming. I just stayed confident within all of that and kept pushing it. Like food for thought. Exactly. You, um, I forgot my question. <laughs> no, I forgot it that quick. Um, interesting. You, you know, I started this thinking you actually cooked. What? No, what you saw? Yeah, I was like, wait a minute. I, no, like, no, what are you talking like, about? Up. The thing is, I actually, I actually do like love to cook. But my thing is, I like playing with people's minds. Yeah. A lot of people, literally, like I was saying earlier, don't know how if you watch something or the people you surround yourself with does impact the energy that you give off of. And that sure. was other. That was another catapult that got me to relocating to Los Angeles. Because I feel like a lot of the people, not everybody, but a lot of people around me, I felt like a free energy source. Like, mm. I know I can call Beans. I have access to him. And I could just dump everything into him. Yeah. And he'll know exactly what to say yeah. and whatever. But I kept feeling empty at that. So I got completely selfish because selfish has a negative connotation. Yeah. I was like, no, what makes sense to you? Where do you need to be? And see how people respond when you create these boundaries that you've always needed. Yeah. Some people... No, are long, no longer in my life, friendship-wise, because they showed their hand, and the people who have been silent since day one, they're still here. But yeah. I feel like it's okay for me to stand up for my boundaries, and I had to in that moment, and everything that people are seeing now is a reflection of the leap of faith that I had to kind of take. So did the, when did the leap of faith happen? Like, so leap of faith going to L.A.? Is that yes, what you're talking about? that was like the largest leap of faith in 2018 of September. Okay. Now t tell us, what was that like? We, I know we've talked to a couple of different creators of people who have been out to L.A. or even tried to. We had Amber on the show, and she mentioned, you know, that was her biggest thing right out of high yeah. school. Boom, straight to L.A. Mm -hmm. So what was it for you? Like, what, how, how, how did that feel? What did that feel like? You know, how did you get yourself on your feet? It was very nerve-wracking, so I drove to L.A. Wow. Mm. Took me two weeks, and I stopped in a lot of different cities because I wanted to make an adventure out of it. So by the time I got to L.A., I left September 16th. I arrived October 1st. And when I first touched down, I was like, oh, this is cool. I see the palm trees, but I'm not on vacation. Yeah. And I don't have a job. And I don't have a place to stay at. So I need to find a way to figure it out because the wow. job that I had fell through. So when I touched down out there, I literally just looked around. I was like, are right, you going to have to make it make sense? I, I just so happened to go into a restaurant. I saw a sign that said that they were looking for a host. And I thought it was like event host, not like mm. host at a yeah. restaurant. So yeah. it was like plot twist. And um, the chef guys made me earn my chef beans name. Because prior to that, I never really worked in the kitchen. Wow. So I started oh, wow. freaking cutting those potatoes, squeezing those lemons, sweeping those floors. I'm like, yo, this is some movies. So I ain't moved to L.A. to work at a restaurant. It was a very humbling <laughs> yeah. experience. Yeah. But I did what I needed to do to kind of get my momentum. Slept in my car for a little bit. Eventually got a spot. But I know that. I've always had confidence in my content. Always. Like, I would look at other people's stuff and be like, not like hitting, but like, it ain't that hot. Like, it, it, yeah. they might be getting bread, but like, if I really put my best foot forward, I had to stop doing that saying, if you're going to talk like this, create some type of conf content to like match that energy. Yeah. Yeah. So with that momentum, and like I said, me failing myself forward, I'm now reaping the fruits of my labor. But I had to stay confident in that, even when my people's back home didn't know exactly what I was doing out west. Yeah. You're saying you're doing this because our parents want us to be safe. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. They want us to make sure we're taken care of. So we're like, I'm a creative. I'm doing this at a podcast. What's a podcast? 
what's all I you know I'm trying to tell you is making sense to me. So to now actually have physical things to match what I was seeing three to four years mm-hmm, ago, mm-hmm. it's like, oh, this is what you're talking about. So a lot of the success and things that are coming now, people are surprised, but this already existed in my mind five years ago. Yeah. That's so, why I'm able to be this calm because I'm like, oh, I've seen this before. So when you were in LA, where you went, you didn't have a network out there? You didn't know folks? The only time I've been to LA prior to that was 2015 when we did a step show out there. Okay. So I had some frat brothers out there, but not like a large group. Like, like come like, oh, hey, it's Beans. It was none of that. It was literally me rolling up my sleeves and be like, let's get it. That's what it was, but I, I'm an extremely confident person, and I I guess the steps that I took first was identifying my distractions. Yeah. Like, what are your main distractions with coming out here so I you don't like get unpack, caught up in the Unpack weeds? that a little bit. So for people who don't really necessarily know how to do that or what it's like doing that, how would you describe, you know, identifying your distractions and being able to navigate that space? So in 2018, one of my mentors, he told me, he was like, yo, you out there create three different ro- three different columns on a piece of paper. One, write a column of everything that you've ever accomplished in your life. Trophy, trophies, different things like that. Mm-hmm. Another column, write down where you want to go. Whatever desirable roles, occupations. And the next row, write down all your distractions. So in this mm-hmm. crossroad or the state of reflection, honestly, my biggest distraction, being transparent, I felt like, was the streets. Like trying to be in like different chicks, like faces, whatever like that. Because that's what I was most used to growing up. That's what a lot of the older dudes on my block was doing. I'm like... This isn't making sense or energetically just giving my energy to people and not getting it reciprocated. Mm-hmm. So how can I stand up for myself in these capacities? Okay, try to cut complete this completely off. Don't be try to be in nobody's face as far as energetic. Make sure it's reciprocated and different things like that. And I, I just started to build from there. And my integrity has always just put me in the right spaces. I got my hand burnt a couple different times leading with love and people not having that same intention. But I feel like we learn from that. Mm -hmm. And that's how I was able to get to this headspace. Like, what actually is fulfillment? People are fulfilled by certain things, but they don't know there's a hole at the bottom of that tank. So fulfillment for me has come from genuine people, has come from doing what actually makes sense to you, standing up for yourself, Mm -hmm. having your own definition of integrity, and and making sure that I'm always leading with my best foot forward and not having expectations from other people. Because mm-hmm. that's what holds a lot of people back. You didn't do what I expected you to do. Oh, yeah. But I didn't even communicate those expectations. So how can I even be mad at you? Mm. You, you know you know what my question is. Mm, go ahead. Zodiac Zodiac it's coming. Wise, you it's a coming. cancer? Gemini. Gemini. I knew it was somewhere right there close. Come on. Cause y'all <laughs> no, it, it is. They're, they're very like very serious about friendships. Yeah. And once you get hurt, y'all, y'all don't. Boy, mm-hmm. y'all be mad for life. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, for me. Because it's. Gemini's get mad, cancers get sad, but yes. y'all be guarded after that. Like, yeah. woohoo! See, I, I learned that I'm extremely sensitive. Yeah. But growing up, sensitive was soft. Sensitive mm-hmm. wasn't highlighted. Like, you, what you look like being sensitive? I'll punch you in your chest if you cry. Yeah. It's certain oh. things like that that like harden yeah. you during adulthood, and it impacts your relationships. Yeah. So where now I'm able to acknowledge if I'm sad, and also still cr- have those boundaries to follow up with them. Like, I'm sad, but I'm also not gonna fuck with you no more. Or I'm mm-hmm. upset, but I can also not repeat this pattern. Yeah. It's things like that. All of that is a culmination to who I am today. But a lot of people didn't necessarily see that process when I'm homesick mm-hmm. from being 3,000 miles away. Yeah. Or everything that I know. But now, like I said, it's, it's a, the energy is a lot different now. But yeah. it's so much that got put into... Because I'm 30 now, but while I was walking around Chef at 25, 26, a lot of people, why he ran me, got the Chef hat on at the event? They don't know it's my brand, but you know how people's egos oh, can yeah. say whatever. Where's the food at? But now it's like, yeah. You know, it's, 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 it's crazy because, again, we talk about a lot of times having the vision, knowing the vision, knowing who you are before you actually become that. You know Absolutely. What I'm Development and, of all that. And, you that. know, I think you hit on the real important thing when you said, being disappointed about your expectation of somebody but never communicating it. And I feel like in personal relationships, it's extremely important. But in business, mm. oh. there's so many Ooh. people, because all that is this negotiation, mm-hmm. is saying, I expect this for that, right? Or just being clear on what you want out of the deal. Yes. And I, that's, that's like a major key in yeah. business because people will be mad. Like, I got played. And they'll be like, but you didn't. You didn't work your contract. Your contract, you didn't You didn't really look it over. Right. Was that clear? Um, so you are basically your own entity. Yes, absolutely. And, you, and so you own all your IP, yes. your intellectual property. Um, 
how has that been as far as in building that up business wise and more or less getting people and finding the right partnerships and people to respect it in the negotiating part, you know, because I know when you when you're coming with, you know, your numbers, your pure numbers of views and social wise and trying to get that worth for it, right. you know, getting people to pay like, hey, listen, you see what's happening here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How's that been? It's been it's honestly been a, an amazing process because, like I said, I've believed in myself before anybody else has. So I'm going into spaces now a lot more confidently. Mm. And I have something called Transparency to Play, which started off as a digital series, which I eventually turned into a play so people could come out and see it in the physical. And the first every play has been sold out. So a lot of people who probably looking from a distance, they're like, how is this dude selling out every time? But I'm very specific. I used to describe what I do as throwing darts at a wall, but I'm not throwing darts at I'm very methodical. So I, I say that to say I walk people into punches. It's like you don't have to believe the, the, the metrics or the things that I'm presenting in front of you now, but just know yesterday's price ain't today's price. Mm -hmm. So when you do come around, just know you basically shooting yourself in, in the foot. So I don't. I don't go into spaces, I guess, like with high hopes. Yeah. I usually go at the same temperament because I'm very understanding that it will be whatever it's going to be. Mm -hmm. If this deal doesn't happen, it wasn't supposed to happen. Just know that you're going to be upset as you see, because I'm going to elevate regardless. Yeah. yeah, You're not in control of the elevation. And and, and it's, it's that foresight that always has me grounded. Yeah. Um Transparency to play. What's that? Oh, you trans. You you're talking that? about transparency. Let me tell you about. <laughs> let me tell you about transparency. So three seasons. Oh, so it's called transparency. The play. No, it's so the the series is called transparency. Okay. okay. And it was birthed in 2018. Um, it got to a place where I look back on all my past relationships. Like, yo, did we ever really know each other, or did we just? Present mm. a representative. Just talk about it. And I'm like, what would it have looked like if we were overtly transparent on the first interaction? Then my mind went to, what would that look like for love at first sight or a single parent? And my mind started bouncing. So I'm like, what would that look like on camera? So I started to write these different monologues of what it could look like on these different situations. I moved out west and I didn't really kick it off at first. Mm. Come 20, June of 2019, I'm like, let's just put it on camera, see how it goes. Week by week, I would put out episodes. Everyone loved it. Season two, I was going to do more casting, but the pandemic hit. So I did the whole season by myself, just went through a story of like someone experiencing a long distance relationship, very not necessarily trapped in a closet style. Pause. Yeah, yeah. Pause if applicable. <laughs> we that, we just but let, you yeah. know how each episode was connected. Like that's how I did that style. Season three, I actually shot at the restaurant that I managed at the time, and people were just kind of like, yo, this shit is fire, it's growing. So I challenged myself, how can I create these monologues for people to come out and see it in person? Mm. It felt very open mic-ish to me at first. Not, like make it a storyline, turn it into a play. Yeah. Create a storyline, what it would look like for couples to be transparent in their relationship mm. and just kind of push the button, rent it out a theater, fundraise the bread, crowdfunded 5K in less than two weeks, that type of thing, yeah. and sold out. So people were like, whoa, did the same thing, not crowdfunded, just used the profit from the first time did it again in February and people kind of like, whoa. So now that I'm about to bring it to Jersey in June, it's like the momentum within that, that people are seeing like this dude isn't stopping for anybody. But that's what transparency is because a lot of times we don't ever really communicate who we are because yeah. sometimes we don't get to that level to where we actually know who we are. Yeah. Yeah. We never really grew in solitude. But yeah. if you grow in solitude, get to know yourself, you're able to communicate your standards, different things when it comes to entering relationships so that there's no gray areas. Okay. Yeah. And that's the intention behind transparency. Back to that rocket ship, what I'm saying, yeah, it's the yeah. content you didn't know you needed. That's how it was growing. That's why when people are coming to the play, they're kind of scratching their head and calling their dad who they haven't talked to in two years after seeing the play. Wow. Mm. Because it's that level of healing that comes with it. Sometimes you don't know what something looks like until you see it. True. And that's what's happening in the and Chef that, Bean's intentional consumption realm. That's that's first of all, that's amazing. Thank <laughs> first you. and foremost. So even even I, I want to chisel away at like your creative artistry that you're yeah. even talking about here. Like so far you talked about the vlogging. Mm -hmm. Yes. Then there's the play. Yes. Mm -hmm. The book. The book. Now, Chef Bean's recipe to women's heart. Okay. So when did you write that? I wrote sh recipe. I've, I've been working honestly on the concept of that since 2016. Okay. Okay. When I first became Chef Beans, 
one of my boys randomly said, shout out to C say, randomly said, yo, you share beans, blah, blah, blah. You should write something called Recipe to Warm Heart, just playing around. And I thought that was such a cool name. Yeah. yeah. And I just never wanted to let it go. So when it came to me just challenging myself, getting out west, like, all right, I got to stay creative every day because I'm not on vacation. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. not cheap to live out here, all these different things. I started to just ask myself, what could that look like? Okay, break it down into ingredients. But if it's not ingredients like a, you baking a cake, what about character traits that a woman might found, find desirable? So mm. I would ask different women, what are some of your three top traits that you're looking for in a partner? And out of a lot of commonalities in that, I created a metaphor to how these character traits can be symbolic to things that you'll learn in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. The kitchen that I told you I wasn't ready to walk into. I'll even give y'all one of the ingredients if y'all ready. Okay. Go ahead, Here drop go. something, drop something. Here's a, here's, a, here's a gem if you haven't read Chef Bean's Recipe to Women's Heart. <laughs> There's something in the kitchen called cross-contamination, and that's basically you have to wash your hands between touching things or the bacteria from chicken, from chicken will get yeah. into the knife. Yeah. Like you got to wash your hands in between that. And I metaphorically use that in the book as... When it comes to you leaving a past relationship, you got to watch the remnants mm. of the past before transitioning into something new mm. or it will attribute to the demise of something, the possibility that could be. Absolutely. It's like things like that that I have in a book where I break down exactly what cross-contamination is yeah. and how if you were to cross-contaminate your relationship, that could not set you up for success. And I'm always, like I said, I've always been confident in my creativity confident in my content so i had to just keep leaning heavily he more heavily into it and stay consistent because there's power in consistency absolutely so let me let me let me just add. is it easy to write a book like just straight up was it hard like yeah. what what was what was what was I the, wait, the book is completed yes it's on amazon chef beans recipes when was hard type it in if i had it on me i already have one for you yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. right you. Yeah. You. but i wouldn't necessarily say that it's Hard, I would say that if it's something new, it's, it's challenging because there's so many different steps that comes with writing a book. Okay, you write the book, cool. Woo, I wrote a book. Okay, how are you going to get it published? Mm -hmm. How are you going to get it distributed? Yep. Yeah. Are you going to get them all sent to your crib and you ship them out? Are you going to go through a third party to where Amazon is shipping them out to you, but they take in a lot of cheese off the top? You, you go through that level of it, but I think when it comes to actually writing a book, it starts with you just deciding mm -hmm. and, and having the discipline to complete it. Because there's so many different distractions. We don't know how many times we check our phone a day. I think it's three hours a day on average from certain people. <sighs> and, that's on, and, that's, and that's on average. I can't get away from my phone. That's they what just I'm saying. be calling me all the time. I and, and that's on average. Done. So if you got something like a book that you're trying to write, you got to slice that average time. So it's all, yeah. if you really want to do it, you can lock in and do it. Back in the day, they didn't have phones. If they wanted information, they would go to the library and have yep. to read a book or if they just wanted to know about carpet, carpentry. Yeah. Now you could just Google how to fix a rug or something or, or dresser. I don't know. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So but that is true. It's about the decision because the book could be whatever you want it to be. But it, mm -hmm. once it's out, or it's at least a physical copy. Yes. Once it's printed, it's printed. Exactly. And are you going to put the discipline or time aside to actually make it into the physical? Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, you, you're out here creating. Like we, like we said, the play, the book, and I know we mentioned it the beginning, the marathons. Yes. So now you now you've stepped into the. the what what about the marathons? But you y'all do you do you host marathons? No. Fi recently, I just ran a, a full marathon, twenty six point two miles. <laughs> yeah. And um, I joined a run club out west called Keep It One Hundred. And the thing about, I feel like a lot of us as we transition into adulthood, sometimes we compare our adulthood bodies to like our high school bodies. Yes. And we look in, <laughs> we look in the mirror like, damn, I remember I could eat fucking McDonald's every day and still have an eight pack. <laughs> It's yep. like things like that. Yep. So so I feel like with all of that, a lot of my friends was going there and I started running. I've never really been a runner, but I realized as I kept extending the length of my miles, how it was helping me internally as well. Mm. So with all of that, a bunch of my friends was running a marathon. And the first year I went, I was just in the cheer section. Mm. But as I was cheering everybody, you know, I'm seeing grandmas, I'm seeing little kids running. I'm like, Nigga, next year, <laughs> you need to be out there. And this year, was a, I didn't train that much, but I just decided. Like, yeah. But the decision came from me running my race. Yeah. A lot of times people do things and they compare themselves to others along the journey. This podcast is doing that. That person is running faster than me. I'm not doing enough. But the whole race, I didn't really listen to music. I just said... When you tell your foot to move forward, let it move forward. When you tell mm -hmm. it, when you need to breathe, you breathe, but just make it to the finish line. And that's what ended up happening. And I feel like metaphorically, 
that has helped me so much along the way because I shoot myself in the foot every time I look on my phone like, I just dropped some heat and I only got this many views. What the... Yeah. And, and you you start to mm. beat yourself up. And I'm like, that's not nice. Yeah. Yeah. Why beat yourself up? Because you are yeah. doing great things. Whenever people catch on, they're just going to go down a rabbit hole. Yeah. And I had to kind of always remind myself of that. Like, people, everybody might not be on right now, but as you continue to grow, they're going to start from day one. Like, where did this person start come from? from? And it's just going to be it's just going to be what it's going to be. I, I don't think I, crazy. It, it's crazy that you're thinking about that now because I don't think even as like us being creators, like I don't even think we looked at we've even thought I haven't at least for me thought about archive history, like even with the podcast. Like for us, like we're gonna I feel like we do an amazing job. This podcast is fantastic. I'm gonna shout ourselves out real quick because disruptors in the culture is like that. It's like that. <laughs> it's, it's like disrupting. That. But like even when you th- when you just said that, like to be able to say you know we have the confidence we know we're at this point but people are just going to catch on when they catch on they're going to start from day one yes so for you it's like you know you've had this thought from the beginning and you continue to go so your so your self talk game and when i mean self like how do you how you talk to yourself your spirit is strong yes what, affirmations can you can you say let us into the what do those conversations look like so a lot of the like earthy, what's your sign stuff. A lot of that stuff was new to me when I moved to LA. I'm gonna be honest. Oh, yeah. I'm just kind of like, oh, your moon rising, Saturn, Mercury retrograde. All right, cool, whatever. Get get to it. Get, yeah. Because where we from, we roll up our sleeves. We real blue collar. Like we going. So a lot of those things I just didn't really deem as though it's true. I'm learning more about it. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I realized. You have a healthy relationship with yourself, but do you really have a healthy relationship with yourself? If you physically in the gym, are you spiritually in the gym? Mm. So when it came to morning mirror affirmations, I would literally talk to myself. There's an app, which I can't think of now, but it helped me create an affirmation that I say every day. And just a piece of it goes from every day and every way I'm getting better and better. My mind is open to receive. Dollars want me. God is my supply. My supply is infinite. Dollars want me. And I would keep going. And then it's just... I will always end it with every day and every way I'm getting better and better. Mm. So regardless of whatever you thought today was going to look like, if you plan on getting 10 out of 10 things done, but you only got eight, that's okay too. Yep. Honor the eight things that you got done. Don't be mad that you didn't get 10 things out of 10. And it's like that type of healthy relationship that I had to develop with myself mm. to where if I have no expectations from like certain things like that when it comes to other people. If I don't communicate certain expectations, if I let you let me down, it's because I let you let me down. Mm. And am I mad at you or am I mad that you're actually triggering something from the past that you probably have no idea about? So getting to the root of why the things that make me tick, that's where it came from. So like I said, a lot of times when it comes to confrontation, if I am in a business meeting, talking metrics, talking all these different analytics, this is why you should pay me, you should pay me, and they say no, if I was to get upset, am I upset that they said no or am I upset that the first time my father may have said no when I was six? Yeah. So am I really mad at them or am I mad at that? Okay, yeah. let me not take it out on them. Let me just be present and just continue to move forward. And I just stayed on that vibration. Yeah. But the confidence always keeps me grounded. Like, you doing your things. Like, consistency in the proof that you have, the content shows how much you're elevating. Yeah. So if they're not aware yet, it's not it's not their fault. Yeah. Absolutely. Because when they catch on, they'll be like, yo, bro, can we get the, the 2022 price? Ah, look, my hands are tied. <laughs> my hands are tied. I tried before. Yeah. And staying confident in that. Just like, all right, cool. That's so true. Like, that. what you said, even like if like when your dad told you no, it's sometimes you even be a little kid and you'd be like, I'm never going to be in a position for someone to tell me no. Exactly. I'm going to do everything myself. I'm, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm going to get a job even though I really want to play soccer or football yeah, or basketball. So, so now when you get a no, it just triggers that part where you're like, why would, I, why would I put myself in this position to get hurt like this again? And it's, like, it has nothing to do with it. Exactly. Like, you know what I mean? They may say no because they might be like, shit, we broke. Exactly. Like, the, honestly, some companies, they're like, we spend our whole budget for the year. Well, we're going to try to circle back. But that no just hits you so hard. Mm. That's so true. Because it's Childhood. connected to so many other things that, like I said, a lot of people haven't even really tapped in or shine light on them shadows that have been circling them. They they wonder why they keep attracting the same type of dude or same type of chick or certain things like that. And it's like, oh, my God, why do I keep ending up in a situation? You keep doing the same things. Have uh, you ever really grown in isolation yeah. and solitude? And I think I, I wear that like like armor because you can't tell me who I, who I, who I am or who I'm not because... I already discovered that. Yeah. I know who I am. So yeah. you can't tell me my worth. You can't try to buy this off me for 10000 when I know it's worth millions. Oh, no. I'm cool. Yeah. Even if you got it in, in, in ones or hundreds. Like, here, I got this for you right now. What? 
that's the type of energy that I'm pulling up with and being calm with knowing that everything will continue to be covered because I know you can't convince me who I'm who I'm not who I I know how I am and, and with listen, that confidence that negotiation yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. it's funny I tell my cousin it a lot I always tell her I'd be like listen you're an attractive woman you choose these men yes mm-hmm. they all want mm-hmm. you but right. it's the ones you pick that right. end up having this outcome. Yes. So why do you keep negotiating for this mm-hmm. and not waiting for what the deal that you really want? Talk about it. You know it. what I mean? Like Talk they, heavy. Like when Monique with the whole Netflix special. Yes. And she said this money was a joke. And then some of the internet clowned her. But I'm like, who are you to tell her what she de- should deserve? Right, She's what her worth is. And then she back. Yeah. And then everybody like, girl, you was smart. And I'm like, come on. Y'all was y'all was talking and talk. <laughs> she y'all was hating the on the girl. Was talking and talk. That was hating on the queen of comedy. Because it's like, something that they feel as though they can't do. A exactly. lot of people are usually projecting. Why are you projecting? Why are you trying to convince me of what you can't do? Don't tell me what you can't do. I know exactly what I can do. And the energy um is a lot different now because I feel like before I could talk my issue but didn't really have nothing to back it. So it's kinda like how can you say somebody's whack or not funny? If you probably never jumped on that comedy say if you call yourself a comedian. Yeah. And then it just comes down to you're not their audience. Exactly. Someone, if you don't like what they got to offer, you're not their audience. And it's okay. Right. Like, I saw this re- clip recently that I was like, wow, I sent it to my son. Um, Tyler, the creator, was talking about artists and how they preview a song. Mm-hmm. And they'll be like, what do you mm-hmm. guys think of the snippet? And he's like, you already did the song. You know you like it. Why are you now judging whether you're going to put it out on their reaction? Right. Put it out. He's like, stop questioning your taste. You yes. know what I mean? And I'm like, wow, that's that's real. So, yeah. We'll sit there and be and like you said, you'll look at something and be like, this was heat. How come they're not liking it? And it's like, that's okay. Yeah. Sometimes they not, whether they're not ready or other stuff is going on in the world, they didn't see it. Right. But like, you know, you know your taste and you know what you have to offer. So Absolutely. it's like, put it out and they will deal. Yes. Mm-hmm. And if they don't. Okay. That's okay too. Sometimes people discover stuff three, four, five years mm-hmm. later. You know. Mm-hmm. So, all right. So you you went out with. So L. A. Was a little bit of a culture shock. A little. It was a. E- I wouldn't necessarily say it was a culture shock. I think it was an ego shock. Mm. I wouldn't call it a culture shock. Talk about that. Talk it was, about it was, that. It was it was an ego shock because being from Jersey, like I said, gift of gab, master manipulator type thing. Like I could go into a room, get what I want to get out the room yeah. type thing. I, like I learned that skill to the T. I think it's a different type of healing or growth that happens when the ground gets ripped from under your feet Mm. and you're not in control. Grandma's crib ain't 20 minutes away. Certain resources, and they have Maslow's hierarchy needs, which the bottom row is your basic needs and top row is uh, self-actualization. So to move out west and for my bottom row to be stripped, and it's not like I can, well, if all else fails, I can always go to my mom's crib. No, you have to figure it out. So when I say an ego check, it's like, Regardless of whoever you think you are, nigga, get to it. So I think that was the biggest like aha moment. Like whatever you want, what are you going to do brick by brick to create the reality that you desire? Mm. And I think with that, I had to be willing to go from a high paying job with the New York City Skyline apartment to living in an apartment where I was warming up water in the microwave to take a shower because the hot water wasn't on. Wow. Mm. Good freaking taking showers at the gym. So because... We, when I was sleeping in my car, like I can't walk around singing. I signed up for playing the fitness like five dollars just so I could take a shower. Mm-hmm. Yeah. To get that low, to work at a restaurant with people younger than me, my manager, knowing like where I came from, what I can do if I just send my resume out yeah. and get a job wherever. It's like, no, this is the reality you said you wanted. What are you willing to persevere or endure to get right. to that point? I did all of that to where now I'm like you can't tell me who I like. I've, I've done that. I've fucking squeezed lemons to my hands, numbed. After already driving it, whatever. Like I've done that. I've reset. I dismantle everything to emerge into the person that a lot of people are seeing now. Mm-hmm. So when I say talk to me nice, when I say you can't tell me who I'm not, it's because I've endured so much to realize exactly yeah. who I am. So give me. It's interesting that you talk about, everybody talks about, I don't think a lot of people discuss those parts of their journeys, but even with that, like, what are, like, give me something that influenced you, like, something that, what, what was your motivation? Or, like, what were things that you were like, these are things that I looked to because I knew I, I was going to get there? Um, the things that I would say I looked to, options for my younger siblings and cousins and mm. over the bridge in Camden because a lot of times I feel like when you're growing up, like, as a black boy, a black girl in the inner city, you feel like, this is your only route. Mm. This is your only option. So and when you say can, this. When I say this, I mean 
uh, getting involved in the streets. Okay. Getting involved in all these different things, going to jail, hot not wear dyphus, all these different like all these different things that probably is a common conversation in your family. Gotcha. What if a person from the same town as you, same blood, say that, okay, I went to college, but and even though my degree might not necessarily be in that, I want to make a living off of storytelling. And I'm going to go to a city where I don't really know anybody and I'm going to get it from the ground up and make a reality and make it so real and tangible to where people is like where this person came from. Mm. They're able to say, okay, my cousin did that. I There's nothing that I can't do because I saw somebody do it with no resources. Yeah. So th- that was a lot of like the fuel that kept me like driving the same direction. On top of that, me just realizing I'm further, I'm closer to my goals than just circling back and, and starting like, okay, let me go back to that because I would have lived life with resentment, dorm, and just be, and just be taking things out on others that had nothing to do with them. Yeah. So I would say that was my biggest aha moment. Like you're not, you're doing it for you, but you're not doing it for you. Yeah. And yeah. if you are who you proclaim yourself to be, you 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 write you you do the storytelling. Let your pen do the talking. And I just let my pen continuously do the talking. And that's what everything people see me post, I wrote. There's nothing that I didn't that I posted that I didn't write, and that's so bizarre to people. Now you had a ghostwriter. Yeah. People can't even receive the magnitude of who you are. You you ain't record that. You ain't edit that. You ain't shoot that. You ain't make that shot. Their podcast ain't all like that. All these different things, like oh, these are projections. Oh, yeah. the, as I emerge to my full capacity, or keep these are things that you feel as though you can't do. Yeah. And staying firm in that, and that's why it's just like, man, I'll be hearing niggas, man. I just, I just want to repeat what you said. People, people cannot, people cannot. Conf- what was it? People cannot. The magnitude that you is, I can't feel the I, word. It's something they can't I, receive it. They people can't, cannot yeah. receive the magnitude of who you are. They can't receive. And, and it, that's crazy because you know what it is. A lot of these people grow up with us, right? They grew up mm-hmm. saying boss, rub shoulders. So when you start to really elevate, what is it? Oh, that's just so and so. That's just so and so from the so and so, and then they really and they can't get it in their head because it's something they feel like they can't do, and mm. they didn't have the courage to do. It. So it's not even trying to cross their mind that's as it. something that's real. Why? Mm. So I mean, and what happens after that? They they just hate or they say whatever. But how I am, I'm like, you can feel however you want to feel, but that's between you and your therapist. Yep. I'm going to do whatever I want to do regardless. Courage mm. is the main bag. People. Most people are scared and just courageous people. You be scared, yeah. still do it. Still do right. it. it coexists. Yeah. Okay. If fear, if if fear is going to be in wrong, okay, that doesn't mean I'm not going to push the button. Yeah. Exactly. But people be mad at that. They don't. They don't build up. Instead of just saying, "Dang, this is making me want to be more brave," sometimes they just get mad and be like, mm. "Who do they think they are?" Mm. And it's like, then it, it's doing a lot of stuff. I'll see people who even just. They don't even show their full not because you don't because there is a boundary of sometimes people don't want to share everything with social media. Right. But sometimes people it'll just be a, a pretty picture of them, and they're like, "Well, what should my caption be? What should I be?" And I'm like, "You worried about what people gonna think about you? Just post the damn picture because you look good. Right. You know what I mean? I just be like, just be like, I, I look good. I feel good. But mm-hmm. they be like, I feel like I'm bragging. I'm like, why are you scared? Why are you so scared of that? Mm-hmm. Like, but also going after what you want. It's like, I feel like. Whatever your end goal is, let's say you might say, I want a media empire or I want to end up with 100 M's in the bank. Even if you didn't get that, you would still be quite fulfilled. Absolutely. Having went on the chase. Yes. Mm. You know, having made the pursuit versus going and doing something else. And let's say, you know, you was teaching and you end up with 10 M's and you'd be like, I did good. You'd be like, I might have ended up broke. Like you was homeless for a bit. You like I'm living out my yes. car, but you were happy that yes. you were even trying. The, it, it was the pursuit, and you just said something that also that it it, it, it spiked something in me because it's the uh, people. Oh, dang, wait, I just kind of love. What was it? No, this, here it was when you talk about the captions. People don't know how much they're like shrinking themselves mm. to, oh. to 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 fit the space of the room. Yeah. That's where yeah. I was going to get at. Yeah, it's kind of like oh, let me stay humble. Let me let me not offend anybody. Let me not, and they don't know how much that's just shrink, shrink, shrink to where it's like, I'm going to show up who I am. Yep. How y'all respond to me is how y'all respond to me. I'm only operating in my truth. So because of that, I have no attachment to how you're going to respond to it. You respond how you respond, but how you respond is going to also show your colors in your hand. Mm. I'm just going to show up as myself, not try to like, 
fit in the room, get smaller so I can like make y'all comfortable. Yeah. I had to release that, and that's what I used to do for so long. Yeah. How can I make the people in this space like comfortable, even if that's me not shining all my highlights, sharing all my highlights? Yeah. Cause you go into a space. What you been up to? I did these things. What about you? Oh well, you know I'm still in a relationship right here. You know me and my baby mom still. Da, 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 da. And you kind of feel bad. After, so next time you're around that person, you might say a little yeah. less. I'm like, no, F that. If you ask me how I'm doing, I'm going to tell you. I don't know how you're going to respond to it, but okay. I'm doing this, this, this. Four sold out plays. Boom, 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 boom. How's everything going with you? And you respond how you respond, but I feel like we got to do a better job and not shrinking ourselves just to make other people comfortable. Because you might, yeah. you you rob them of the experience of seeing a possibility, a hustle. Talk about it. But then also like, you know, people might also be like, well, you ain't doing that much. You ain't like, and it's like, I'm you not, I'm not comparing my, my journey to somebody else's. Yep. I'm just proud of what I'm doing and mm. where I'm going. And I'm not, you know, like, it's like, you like, I'm trying to be, I'm comparing myself to like a Kevin Hart. You mm. like, I... I like what he's doing, and I find it aspirational and inspirational. But you know, you're like, oh, should I shrink myself because I'm not at that level yet? No, no, hell no. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. no. Um, huh? So what? What's the? I guess it's like it is, it's just, that always changes. Like, not the end goal. Yeah. But like, what's the next big dream? <sighs> it's hard to answer that, and the reason why I say it's hard to answer what's the next big dream is because I feel like I'm living in it. Mm. A lot of times where I feel like when people say my my this is my goal, this is my end goal, but for me, I will I can more so tell you the direction where it's headed. So transparency to play is actually a conduit to everything else that I got going on because screen T V writing is coming, writing movies and things like that. It just more so is a way for to grow my audience and grow my crowd. I never had any aspirations to write plays or anything like that. It just more so happened. Yeah. Got a lot of traction. I'm like, oh, this is what people really rock when if they can feel it in person, let me continue to feed this. But at the end of the day, I'm just going to continue to monetize my storytelling ability and let that carry me wherever it carry me, knowing that I'm always protected, knowing that mm-hmm. I'm uh, always abundant. And the finances are attracting to me because I know that they're already mine. I know I have the value to match the finances or the the currency that I know mm-hmm. I deserve because I'm seeing y'all fun BS. A lot of this stuff is basura. <laughs> <laughs> and I know I got that Teflon. So knowing that, it's like everything else is just going to come. And that's yeah. just how I operate. I know I'm a billion-dollar dude. Like, yeah. And it, it, it had nothing to do with anybody else. I was born this way. And I feel like w- most of life, if people are brave enough, they have to circle back to who they were actually born and destined to be. Some people are cool with the familiarity of whatever life hands them. Me, I'm like, nah, I'm going to get everything that's mine. And if that means I have to stop messing with the person who I knew since second grade, sorry, bucko. I got to do what I got to do. How old, how old were you when you felt like you were? You realized you were like a storyteller? First grade. I and feel I said, like it happens early. Yeah, yeah it, 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 it happens early. Uh, I went to Forest Hill Elementary School in Camden, and they brought in, like, these storytellers. Mm-hmm. And we had to close our eyes, and I remember they had, like, a rain stick, and we were going through, like, a forest or, like, a jungle. And at the time when the lions was coming, we had to, like, tap our leg, our hands on our legs. And when, the, and when it was, like, it was very ferocious uh, rainstorms, they had the rain stick was going, like, whoosh, yeah. whoosh. And I remember in my mind, I saw it, and I'm like, dang, this is dope. And that transition to, I don't know if y'all remember, like, Stomp. And they had, yeah. like, mm-hmm. uh, push boom. That's crazy. <laughs> and they had, like, the sounds. I was like, dang, they're making, like, an orchestra off of the things that's just around them. Mm-hmm. So I think the creativity in me, it's like you can make music out of anything around you. Yep. And as far as storytelling, if I just close my eyes, I can imagine whatever I want to see. That's crazy. And I feel like that mm-hmm. kind of got buried was I got into middle school, high school, started getting into sports chicks yeah. then everybody's mm-hmm. society pressures telling me i gotta go to college to get a degree you're doing everything that people are telling you to do and then when you get to a point where you're like hey, fuck, fuck all that yeah what do you want to do yes and like you go back to that childlike storytelling thing you're like okay there's a there's similarities in this let me keep leaning into that and then you know i said that's crazy because I, I realized the age difference because yeah. i'm like dang you were six and getting introduced to stomp and i was 16 in drama camp <laughs> she said like, I was doing stuff. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I'm like, dang, we went to go see it. That was supposed to be one of our like trips. And for they drama had the camp. push drums and the back, yeah, all that. It was and the and touring ching, company. Ching, ching. We yeah, exactly with yeah, the trash can thing. Yeah. <laughs> we went to see the touring company, and, and then I remember seeing it on Broadway. So it's crazy. I'm like, God, I was, I was. You were still out young. College. You were still yeah. young. And you see, and you like, 
wow, okay. And like and but like I said, that gets buried sometimes yeah, yeah. when it comes to other people's fears. Yes. So we, we when we talk about we've talked about a lot of creative journeys so far in our journey here with Disruptors in the Culture and Disrupt this because we disrupt this Absolutely but it, it's funny because that 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 uh the heart of a creative either comes out in two ways that I've seen commonality like the common threads is that one, you've had it the whole time, you know what you want to do, you make the leap, you can you do it since you know you you get the opportunity to do it, and you're always doing it and you just at some point, you know. You become a master at your craft and you, you find success in that. Or you know you're creative. It gets buried from the world. You know, other people talking, mm-hmm. sports, you, you start, chicks, you know, whatever comes into your life at that time. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, you get to a point where you realize, I need to bring that that spark, that passion back. Yes. Whatever that was, I need that back. Yes. And creatives come back and they, you know, re-thrive themselves from there. So I, I, you're the, I think you're the first person I've heard acknowledge that out loud and say, like, you know, that was my, that's how I came about it. I was young, I lost it, I came back, but I always still had it, yeah. and I reignited it. Yes. You know what I mean? I think that's like, that's really important. And I know, I know we're running, we're getting, we're getting low on the, the, the time here, which is fantastic, but because I know that you've shared so much and you still have a lot more to share, but we do have a couple, you know, fun questions and, and a statement we definitely want to get you, you know, to, to, to talk about. I have a fun so, question for y'all if we have time to. We, we got some time. Okay. We got some time. Um, so I, I, I prepped you a little bit for it, but I want to. I want to know this question. What's going on, y'all? It's Chef Beans coming through with the mental cuisine. You're now tuned in to the Disruptors in a Culture podcast. Make sure that you tune in. <laughs>